this one is maxed out. This one is maxed out. Well, almost. It has 64 gigs of RAM, but that's more than we'll need for today's comparison. And we also have the most powerful Intel-based MacBook Pro from 2018. Let's do some machine learning. We'll start with ARM laptops. And first test, light GBM. Binary classification, 10 million rows and 50 columns. This is about the size of a good industrial use case. We'll launch training on both machines simultaneously on the identical environment. And the M2 Max in the MacBook Pro has scored 2 minutes versus 3.8 on the M2 MacBook Air. A very good result for both of them. And although M2 Max is almost twice faster than the Air, in the traditional machine learning realm, which excludes deep learning, this is not a deal breaker, because not often you'll face problems where model training will take days. You'll spend much more time data cleaning and feature engineering. Next up, TensorFlow on CPU. We're training a convolutional neural network with three hidden layers, 1.2 million parameters on the MNIST dataset for five epochs. The difference between these processors is in the amount of cores, 12 physical cores on the M2 Max and 8 on the M2 Air. But keep in mind that these machines have performance and efficiency cores, and if you compare the performance cores, the difference is twofold, 8 versus 4. Let's see how it affects the speed. Okay, 1.5 minute on the Pro versus 2.1 minute on the Air. About 25% difference, not very dramatic. Now let's train the same model on GPU. Both these ARM MacBooks are configured to utilize metal, and I did a video on that, and check it out if you need to. Same code, same data set, different hardware. And the M2 Max has scored 22 seconds, and the Air has finished in 45 seconds. First of all, this is a very noticeable improvement comparing to the results on the CPU. More than threefold speed up from their corresponding timings. And between each other, now we have about twofold difference. Now let's fine tune a large language model, and we'll do this both on CPU and GPU. We'll use PyTorch with a pre-trained transformer from Hugging Face with a few additional classification layers on a corpus of 50,000 financial transactions descriptions. After training for three epochs, we've got the smallest time difference so far. 9.5 minutes for the max versus 11.1 minutes for the air. And the same model on GPU has trained for 2.7 minutes on the max versus 4.5 minutes on the air. But at this scale, the time difference is not that obvious, and you might wonder, does it worth the extra $4,500 just to save a few minutes here and there? But our final test is gonna answer that question. Same large language model, only this time running for 50 epochs on the GPU. And this is gonna be just about the only use case, well, if you're a data scientist, where you will appreciate the active cooling system on the Pro. And in this particular case, it shines like a star. Check this out. At the start of the training, both machines go fairly quick, but as the processor temperature on the air reaches 100 degrees Celsius, it instantly throttles down, computation speed drops and stays that way for the rest 98% of the training, and the Pro just turns on the fan and goes on full speed from start to finish. As a result, we have 44 minutes of training time on the Big Daddy versus 2 hours and 13 minutes on the air. This is 300% difference. And before we draw any conclusions, let's put the Intel-based Mac on our chart. And wait for it, this is gonna be an amazing comparison. This MacBook was the top dog when I bought it back in 2018, and I switched to this M2 Max just recently. I've shared my impressions about the purchase here. Testing light GBM on the same problem resulted in 7.4 minutes training time, which is 3.5 times slower than the M2 Air, and five times slower than the M2 Max. TensorFlow on CPU finished on 5.6 minutes, which is two and a half times slower than the M2 Air and four times slower than the Max. Large language model, the one with the transformer on CPU for three epochs, 57 minutes, which is six times slower than the M2 Max. And it is even slower than M2 Max running 50 epochs on the GPU. We didn't train any models on GPU here, well, because there is no GPU, or at least the one compatible with CUDA, and there is no metal. Now, what if we have two hypothetical people, one with the Intel Mac, the other one with the M2 Max, and both of them need to train this biggest model from our example for 50 epochs with all the means they have available. Well, the M2 Max will fire up its 38 GPU cores, and as we have seen, will complete the task in 44 minutes while the Intel guy will have to use the CPU and will cripple his machine for 9 hours straight until the job is done. This is just an amazing difference. So which one to choose? I would go with M2 Max, well I already have it and I still would have made the same choice even after these tests, just because it makes no compromises. And if you're into deep learning, what would have taken a day on a Max will take 3 days on the air and I'm not even speaking about the Intel. This does make a difference. 
but also after having run these tests I could see myself using the air every day just as well because for the most part the performance dip is going to become noticeable only on the high load and let's face it none of us are going to be training large language models on our laptop every day and I have to say the design on the new MacBook Air is just gorgeous so if the budget is tight get the air just make sure to opt in for 24 gigs of RAM if you plan to use it for machine learning